All right, so we are up to video number eight. And in today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at assigning groups to our users. Now we haven't discussed permissions yet, but it's very important to understand groups so that we can have an accurate and thorough discussion of permissions when we get to that point. Groups essentially allow us to give a subset of users certain permissions to do certain things all in one shot. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create groups and also how to assign them to your users. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create users as well so you'll understand how to do both. And then when we get to the subject of permissions, it'll all come together. So to recap something that we have gone over before, when you do ls with dash l, that gives you a long listing and you can actually see the permission string for each of the directories or files or whatever is in that directory. Now here is the permission string. We'll go over that in another video. But specific to this video, we are interested in this right here. This section shows us what the owning user is, as well as what group owns that particular resource as well. In my case here, each of these items is owned by my user and my group. We will come back to this subject in another video, but for now, I just want you to understand how to tell which user and which group is assigned to the file or the directory. Now, similarly, if I was to randomly just decide on, let's just do a long listing of the Etsy directory. In this directory, there are a lot of files. System level configuration files are stored here. But specific to the subject matter at hand, we can get some different output than we would get in our normal home directory. Most of the files and folders in Etsy are going to be owned by root as the user and root again as the group. But if you scroll through, you might see some additional variations that will differ from that. And here we see a few examples of where the owning user and the owning group are not one and the same. So here, this file right here, the dnsmask.conf file, is owned by root, but the group assigned to it is dnsmask. And then here we have pretty much the same thing where the owning user is again root, and the group that's assigned to it, in this case, is something different, it's LP. So now you know how to tell what the group and user ownership is in a file or a folder. Back to the subject of assigning groups and creating and removing groups, we first need to know what the group assignments are for our current user. We need to know how to do that. And we also need to know how to do the same thing for a different user. If I execute the groups command with no options and press enter, we can see the group assignments for the user that I am currently logged in as. If I switch to root, for example, and then I do the same thing. We get different output. Root is only a member of root for the group. But honestly, that's all root really needs because root can do pretty much everything. Like I've mentioned before, root is the god mode account, the most powerful user on a Linux system. Now, one thing you can do with the groups command is you can actually check the group memberships of a different user. Again, if you enter groups by itself, it defaults to giving you a listing of the groups that your logged in user is a member of, but now I am logged in as root, and I can also do that against a different user. So now I get the output for my user, but I did that from a different account. So I just press Control D to log out of root, and now I'm back to my user. So now you know that you can use the groups command to view your group memberships, and you can also use it against another user. We don't have any other users yet, but if we did, we could do something like this to see what groups another user is a member of, but you'll probably need sudo to interrogate another user. We'll go ahead and back this out. And you might be wondering what all groups are available. Well, one way to find out is you can use the cat command or any command that can print the contents of a file. And let's do Etsy group. 
Wow, we have a lot of groups here. I mean, look at all these. Now, I haven't created any groups yet. These are actually groups that come default with the CentOS installation. The reason why we have so many is because there are system groups that are created for various services, applications, and things that are installed. Now you'll notice that I have a group here as well. And right here we have a group ID or GID. Every group has one and no two groups will share the same GID. This is the numerical representation of a group and this is the name of that group. You can see that we have a name in the first column all the way up here. And then in the last column, we also have a GID. Now typically, you can tell a system group from a user group by the fact that user groups will start at 1000 and go up. When you create a group, you can actually tell it what group ID you would like to use if you want to use something specific. And again, we checked the contents of this file right here, slash Etsy, slash group, to view a list of all the groups. We didn't need sudo to view the contents of that file because all it is is just a listing of groups. It's not really private. And again, that gave us this output right here. Okay, so you know how to check the groups that your user is a member of, and you also know not only where the groups are stored on the system, they're in that file, you also know how to view the contents of that file to see what groups are available for you to add to your users. Now, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to add a group to a user account. But to do that, I wanna actually create a group to use as the example. Now, adding a group is very easy. There's a specific command for that, it's group add. We will need sudo to use this command. I will create a group called heroes. But it's not gonna let me do that though. Again, unless I use sudo or if I am logged in as root. So I'll go ahead and add sudo to the front of that command and then press enter. I'll put in my password and we should be good to go. So let's see what exactly happened here. So we'll cat Etsy group again. And you can see immediately what happened down here at the bottom. We have heroes, the group I just created. And you can see that the group ID is the same as the previous group ID, but plus one. That's what it does by default. So I'll clear the screen. And just like we have the command group add, we also have group del, basically group delete, which can do basically exactly what you think it does. If I give it the name of an existing group, and again, I'll need sudo, it's going to go ahead and remove that group. It didn't ask for password because I just put in my password for sudo not that long ago. It hasn't timed out yet. But if I go ahead and check the contents of that file again, we can see that at the bottom where that group was, it's not there anymore because we deleted it successfully. Now I mentioned that you can create a group with a very specific GID if you would like. Now there's not often a, you know, common reason to need to do this. But, you know, every now and then, maybe that is something that you would need to do. So I may as well give you guys an example. So I'll do sudo group add dash g, and I'll give it something cool like, let's just say 2099, that'll definitely stand out. And there was a 2099 series of Marvel comics. So I guess if I'm creating a group called heroes, that would fit. I'll press enter. And now if I go ahead and check the contents of that file yet again, we can see that sure enough, we added the group heroes back to the system, but we specified the GID that we would like. But what happens then if we want to create a group, similarly how we did so here, but create a new group with the same GID as the last one? As you can expect, it's going to fail because that group ID is already in use. It's not going to let you create a new group with that ID. So now what I want to do is actually add my user to that group. Maybe I took a second job as a superhero or something, who knows. Anyway, to do so, there's several ways of doing that. The way I do it is user mod dash A for add. You want to add to a group. 
The group name that we want to add something to is heroes. And the user that we want to add to that group is mine. And if you are not logged in as root, of course, as you know, you'll need sudo to be able to have permission to run a command like this. I'll press enter. We should be good to go. So again, you can use the groups command to view a list of groups that your user is a member of, but it's not there. Now it didn't seem like the command failed. What's going on? Well, actually you have to log out and log in for the new group assignment to take effect. But you can still see that this was successful by simply switching to a different user, or in this case, I'll just switch to root, put in root's password, and now I could do groups, and then the user I want to check the group memberships of. I'll press enter, and we can see plain as day that my user is in fact a member of this group right here. So when I log out and log in, then I run the groups command, then I will see that this group is on the list. Also, it would probably be useful to understand how to remove a user from a group. I'm already logged in as root, so if I wanted to remove my user from heroes, I could do this. Which is gpasswd d for delete, the username you want to change, and the group that you want to remove from that user. It even tells you exactly what it's doing. And now I could do groups and then my username. And you can see, sure enough, I was able to remove my user from that group. So there you go. At this point, you should know how to check group memberships, create groups, delete groups, add your user to a group, and also how to remove your user from a group. In the next video, we're going to take a look at assigning administrative privileges to your users by customizing the sudo command. I'll see you there.